still on the coronavirus since the recorded case of this virus in Nigeria, there has been a growing concern over arbitrary hikes in prices of protective kits and products. As health authorities in Nigeria are working round the clock to contain the virus after Africa's most populous country, Nigeria, confirmed its first case, well, many false information about the disease have become rampant, especially on how the disease can be transmitted and contracted. Such false information includes receiving packages from China, hand dryers killed the coronavirus, eating garlic will help prevent the infection with new coronavirus, and spraying alcohol and chlorine all over your body will kill the new coronavirus. Well, a lot of myths there. However, medical experts are calling for proper health information, awareness, and literacy campaigns by the Nigerian authorities as a way to check the spread of the novel coronavirus. And joining us now to discuss the myths and facts of the virus from Rohfika Hospital in Akonja area of Lagos State is Executive Medical Director of the hospital, Dr. Joseph Onigbide, who is also an infectious disease specialist. Thank you, Dr. Onigbide, for uh, joining us this morning from your office. Uh, so you heard us. We're talking about the meat and facts here. And let's just begin with the most controversial one and the one out there is that warmer weather would stop the spread of coronavirus. How true is this? True or false? Actually, uh, we expect by now that a couple of countries, not just three countries in Africa, will have been uh, infected by the virus. But uh, interestingly enough, only three countries so far have reported the, the infection, uh, the uh, acquired of that infection. But uh, nobody knows as at now. It cannot be uh, tied down. Some said maybe because of the weather, because of the temperature and so I don't think so, because uh, even uh, Arab countries, Arab countries that are even hotter than Nigeria, uh, they already have it, like the Middle East. So nobody actually knows the, what, is, what is responsible for the low uh, infection rate in Africa for now. But all the same, I think uh, Africa is blessed in that case. Uh, we already have a lot of burden of uh, infectious disease in Africa. So if we are spared of this uh, coronavirus, then I think it's a, it's a good thing from God. Uh, all right, uh, doctor, this is not a myth, uh, but you can call it a myth that everybody, when they, once, as soon as they get here, they start to get better. And I'll give a case in point. Okay. The Italian, the Italian uh, this morning on the papers, I'll see it on the papers, I said he's 70% stable, you know, already. Is, is there something in, in our water here yeah. uh, once you just get in, you get better, or the way we've managed it uh, thus far? No, I think. Uh, it's, a, it's a combination of the two. The way we manage it, we've given proper management. And uh, number two, uh, we should also know the, the state of health of the Italian by the time he came to Nigeria, because uh, a lot of uh, overemphasis is being placed on the infectivity of uh, coronavirus. The coronavirus is not as deadly as uh, people want us to believe. Because if you compare that to other infections we've had in the past, uh, such as SARS and MERS, uh, SARS had uh, about 9 to 10 percent of uh, mortality, and, the other, and uh, MERS had 35 percent. But this is only 2.5, going to 9 percent, uh, 2.9. So I don't think it's as terrible as it is. So I would give not just the credit, uh, not the credit only to Nigerians' uh, way of managing it, but uh, because Maybe the man himself had a very good uh, yeah. uh, health. Mm. If you don't have a health challenge, you, you'll be able to go uh, uh, to cope with the infection. So that is having 70% recovery now. It's cheery news. Uh, by the grace of God, I think it will be okay. And the only thing that we need to do is contact tracing, those who are come in contact with him, uh, if, and which I think Nigeria is very good at that because we had Ebola uh, in, 19, uh, in 2014. And we very well coped with that. Okay, so speaking about the cure, I mean, the Director General of WHO, Dr. Tedros, came out to say that right now there are about 20 vaccines being worked on globally. And very recently, the former chairman of INEC, uh, Professor Morris Iwo, also came out to say that he had, in fact, been uh, working on a cure for this virus for a while now. How confident are you how, that we're close to getting the cure for this deadly, deadly virus? Well, I, I, I am quite confident that uh, 
within a few months, we should have uh, both prophylactic and uh, therapeutic vaccine for. We mentioned there are a couple of uh, centers that are already working towards having a vaccine, including you know Nebraska, Canada, and so so many places. And uh, our professor uh, Yuwu Chu is also has already come out with uh, what you have just said. So I'm very confident that uh, in a few months uh, we should have solution to this uh, deadly virus. Okay, Doctor Nibide, can the virus go undetected? And I'm talking about community spread here. Uh, in Washington, for instance, oh, yes. there are Absolutely. fears that the virus had been there since January, uh, but they are just only detecting it now where they have had two deaths. Can we, what are the risks of having this community spread in Nigeria? Because as we have now had over 150 people on the plane with the Italian, the index case cannot be traced at this moment, cannot be contacted at this moment. Do we risk community spread in Nigeria? And what exactly is community spread? Well, uh, I think we stand the risk of having community spread in Nigeria because the level of information and understanding of the populace is still a bit low. Although right now there is a bit of anxiety everywhere, but the risk cannot be put uh, aside because, uh, and that's where, that is where I think public health Nigeria has to do a lot of uh, awareness and community com cultivation because uh, a lot of people might not know how you can get, uh, the, the, the bad thing about the virus is that it can also be transmitted even when the person is not showing symptoms, right? So that's where we, ha we have problems. Because uh, I understand it can showing symptom, symptoms. So the, the possibility of having community spread is there. It's very high in Nigeria. Okay, I, I quickly want to ask about this. It's a myth. A lot of people are saying once you catch it once, normally you're supposed to build immunity to the disease and not be able to catch it again. But is it a myth or a rumor about the fact that somebody said, oh, they caught it once, they got well, and they're catching corona again? Is that true or is it just a myth that once you catch it once, you'll be able to build immunity against it? Well, uh, a lot of things are not yet known about the, this virus. But the rumor that you had, I also had the rumor that uh, somebody had it before and he had it. That means he didn't, have, uh, he didn't build immunity, which is uh, quite... Uh, which is quite sad and is a bit a bit arbitrary to what we know in uh, viral infectivity. But we don't know so many things yet. And I think in a couple of days or weeks, uh, more information will come out, uh, whether we can have a repeated infection or reinfection of the virus or not. For us at now, I think we can, somebody has said that they've had it before and they already had a reinfection. So we should just Research is, still, research is still going on, and in a couple of days, more information will come out. Okay, I mean, I spoke, we spoke to a gynecologist earlier, and we're talking about the current state of our airports when it comes to checking people coming in from especially infected countries. I'd like to know what your take on that is. For example, the case of this Italian man who was a carrier of the virus and had been in contact with 158 people. Now, are you of the opinion that there should be a total ban or we should just improve the effectiveness of our checks. And if you could advise the government, the current government, what would you tell them to do right now to prevent this spread? Well, if I, if I have any opportunity to advise the government, I will advise that in areas where you have the epidemic, very well, like in, have in China and uh, uh, South Korea and a few other countries, Iran, I think for now you, you could have a clamp down on them uh, because... Uh, it can be very dangerous to have people from that place to come and infect us in this place. So I think that, that would be my own advice. But, um, but as, you see, as we say, uh, there are some places that you don't even have uh, information about whether they have the virus yet or not. But where we know clearly, uh, like the epicenter in China, let there be a complete uh, lockdown or a, co a complete uh, ban of people from that area or you even going to that place. That will be my advice to government. Okay, uh, Dr. Nigbide, to what extent does saying goodbye to hold, um, old habits of um, 
handshaking, hugging, curb the spread of this virus? Is it a myth <laughs> or a fact that you can get it from shaking and hugging and pecking and kissing? Well, it is possible to, take, to, to get it from handshaking and uh, maybe hugging because uh, the virus itself is transmitted, at least what we know now, is transmitted via uh, droplets, not via uh, air aerosols. So if somebody has just uh, been contacted, uh, just uh, been infected through droplets and you shake such a person, it is possible for you to get the virus. Uh, you, you, you hug the person, but as far as we know, uh, the virus cannot be transmitted for now through aerosols. But handshaking might constitute uh, some risk value. And I know uh, some people are taking it too far. <laughs> the epicenter, they you know have leg shaking instead of, instead of handshaking. Well, uh, that's a bit too far, but I think we have to be a bit uh, uh, careful when it comes to where you can have uh, body fluid, where you can have droplets, you know, infecting. Even, even all, for instance, on the uh, uh, on escalators, escalators, one can get it if somebody who, who is infected already uh, okay. uh, touched that place, and you just come in and, just, and you touch that place. Okay, doctor. Okay, doctor, real quickly. Another yes. big one. I, I mean, I asked a question earlier on from the, I want to get your view on this. Chloroquine, it's making the rounds. Chloroquine. Active ingredients can be good for coronavirus. The DJ of Nagda talked about it this morning. What's your take? Is it a myth or a fact for you? What, what did the DJ of Nas, Nas, Naka say? The DJ of Navdak was on television this morning. I was because talking. I have, my, I have my own misgiving about that. I was talking about see, the fact see, that chloroquine. It's been used on 1,000 patients in yeah, China. Yeah, they have been testing chloroquine on patients in China, and it's been giving good reports. Well, that, that's interesting, and uh, that is interesting. But what, one, one thing I want to also, the way I'm, I'm reasoning is this, that, you know, malaria itself, malaria itself brings down immunity, immune system. And so when you treat with chloroquine, the immune system is boosted. So that might explain why you have quicker recovery in people that are treated with chloroquine, because they are from malaria treatment. That is the way I look at it. But for us to see whether the active ingredient of chloroquine is actually uh, very, very active against the virus uh, is yet to be seen as far as I'm concerned. But I think in the way of the management, when somebody came down with virus and the person also had a co-infection of a malaria, a malaria parasite, then if you make, take care of the malaria parasite, then the immune system will come up. And, and so, you, uh, I think the person will recover quicker than somebody who didn't have uh, malaria, uh, chloroquine well, malaria treatment. Thank you so much, Dr. That's Nick Bide. It's been myself. fun having you on The Morning Show and educative as well. Thank you very much. Uh, infectious disease specialist from his hospital on The Morning Show. That brings us to the end of the show, by the way. I am Adey Sua. I'm Omar Ryan. I'm Rafael Sini. And I'm Shaito Atigari. Thank you for watching. You can also follow us on all our social media handles showing now on the screen with live streaming, of course, on Arise.tv.